Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is another true crime and story time that I am doing. And I thought I would cover the disappearance slash kidnapping of Shannon Matthews. Now, I literally live so close to where this all happened in Dewsbury. I live in West Yorkshire um, and obviously Dewsbury where she lived is West Yorkshire. So I actually remember this clear as day when this was all going on. I remember all the publicity around it, everyone going to Dewsbury Mall, which is the part of Dewsbury that Shannon was from. Um, and everyone literally came together as a community to go and help find Shannon Matthews. And that's one thing that I loved about this case, probably the only thing that I loved about this. But anyway, so let's start at the beginning. So nine-year-old Shannon Matthews was last seen on the 19th of February, 2008. Sorry, ignore the curtain. Um, she'd gone to school as normal that day. She'd got up, got dressed, apparently. Um, she'd sat around the table with her siblings and all had breakfast together, which seems very nice, but not realistic, or at least not in my house. We don't always sit, get to sit together for breakfast, but anyway. So she went to school as normal. On that particular day, she was doing swimming lessons with the school where they took them to Dewsbury Sports Centre as a, as a class, and they all went swimming together. And this is when she was last seen by friends, I suppose. So the swimming pool is about half a mile from her home. And it says that Shannon's mum, Karen, would used to walk to go meet Shannon um, from school and walk her home. However, on this particular day, she didn't um, because she was shopping. Now, she was shopping with Craig Meehan's sister. So Craig Meehan is her boyfriend at the time who is 22, so I believe that he's 10 years younger than Karen. Um, so anyway, this particular day, she was shopping with his sister and she couldn't go to meet Shannon off the bus or from swimming pool or whatever it was. Now, Craig Meehan was meant to work that day, but he also didn't go into work that day because he wasn't feeling well, I believe. So that's some more question marks, I suppose. Um, so he didn't go to work that day either. So when Karen got in from the shopping trip with his sister, it was Craig that said to her, Shannon's still not back yet. Do you know where she is? And she said, no, she should be. At this point, they phoned a few friends and just said, is she with you? And they would all say, no, she'll be at park. Da -da -da -da. Don't worry about it. But then it got to 10 to 7 at night and they're like, this isn't right, this isn't like Shannon. So some, one of her friends, I believe, said to her at 10 to 7, look, you need to phone the police now. She's not back, she should be back. This is not like Shannon Matthews. So then they phoned the police. Yeah. Hiya, I want to put my daughter's missing police. Yeah. Right, how old is she? Nine. Nine? Yeah. When did you last see her? She went to school this morning. Right, have there been any argument or any No, friend? not at all. No. Have, have you been in touch with any of her friends or anybody like that? I've been everywhere I can think of her from friends, wives and family and everything. And nobody at all no. has any information on where she can be? No. Does she go to school and come back on her own normally then? Yes. Right, so you were expecting her home off at 4 o'clock then? About, about half a seat later she's come right. back and trust me, so what, three. Does she have a mobile phone or anything like that? No, she's at home. Just right, so she, there's no way of actually ringing to find yeah. out. But you've rung around all the friends, yeah. and you've been in touch with all the relatives, yeah. and there's nowhere else that you've got left to look. No. Have you been in touch with the school? Or, 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 can they confirm whether she went to school at normal time at 10 past me? Right. What the caller? Shannon Matthews. Has she been missing before? No, first time. So this is when the investigation was going to start, which eventually took more than 250 police officers and 60 detectives to work on this particular case. It became the biggest police investigation in West Yorkshire since the Yorkshire Ripper. So that's kind of how big this escalated and got. Um, it was also compared to the Madeleine McCann's disappearance as well, which everyone was saying because Karen lived in a council house, she had six children which also when the police asked her, she actually said she has five children, but they knew she had six. So that was a bit weird as well, not knowing how many children you've got. But it's said that they didn't get as much help with them being lower class, shall we say, than the McCanns. So even though it's a very similar situation between Madeleine McCann and Shannon Matthews, that is why they were saying the McCanns got more publicity because they were two doctors that had gone abroad. Whereas this is Karen Matthews from Dewsbury, who's in a council house with six kids. Anyway, that's separate. 
So by now, family, friends, neighbourhood people had all come together. People that weren't even from the neighbourhood were just driving down to help out with the search for Shannon Matthews. People were coming from everywhere to help out. So it'd been a few days and everyone's helping. With it being a few days after the police didn't ask everyone to stand down because they thought it's been a few nights now, she's definitely not run away. If this is a kidnapping, then we don't want a member of the public or even a member of her family finding her. The police asked everyone, especially the family, to stand out and just let the police go out there and do the work. In terms of publicity, they might not have had them as much as Madeleine McCann got. However, the Sun newspaper, for one, offered a £20,000 reward for anything to do with finding, finding Shannon Matthews, which actually increased after 20 days went by. The Sun newspaper then said £50,000 reward of helping to find Shannon Matthews, which I actually thought was amazing. And also a business from Huddersfield, which is about nine miles away from Dewsbury, also offered to help with £5,000 on retaining Shannon Matthews as well, which is another amazing little thing. I also just want to add that after this case closed, it actually got turned into a documentary in which actors and actresses came in to replay the whole thing. Sheridan Smith was one of them. And one bit made me laugh. I don't know if that's right or wrong. But this is the real detective saying that when she'd come to meet Karen, she sat down on the first day to get all the information that she's a liaison officer. She said, and the phone started ringing and Shannon, uh, Karen got up and started dancing. And then in the little documentary that was made after, a few years after, this is the actor doing the impression of Shannon. <laughs> actually cracks me up I'm sorry sorry that actually cracks me up every single time I mean if my child had gone missing I certainly would not be dancing to the liaison officer's ring tune anyway moving on <laughs> she also said that she found it weird that Craig Meehan so Karen's boyfriend would just be sat on his computer all the time now later on something comes out of this but for now that's weird your child's missing your girlfriend's child's missing you don't sit and play games, you don't dance to ring tunes, do you? So 24 days later, the police did find Shannon Matthews alive. She was apparently drugged up. I don't understand what state that means, but I'm assuming it's her. She doesn't know where she is, what's going on. She's in a bit of a daze. And she was found underneath a divan bed. So do you know, like when you've got a big double bed and there's all the space underneath, she was actually in there. She was found in a flat in Batley Car, which is not far from Dewsbury where she lived. Now, the tenant of this flat was 39-year-old Michael Donovan, who is also the uncle of Craig Meehan, Karen's boyfriend. So Shannon was then placed into the care of the social services and after a few weeks when she was deemed fit enough to answer police questions, she then went and helped with their inquiries. So Donovan was charged with kidnapping, false imprisonment and perverting the course of justice. He appeared at court and he was remanded. Also during this time, he actually tried to attempt suicide. So going back to Craig Meehan, which is Karen Matthews' boyfriend, who's 22, he got arrested but he got arrested for possessing indecent images of children. So at this moment, I mean, even now, people don't know if he had anything to do with the Shannon Matthews disappearance, but he did have images of children on his computer, which he was very, very close with. I remember when the news people used to go in and the black like, filming and he would be just sat on his computer He's probably tried to get rid of him and the police just did a full search of it and found them all. So at the trial, it was found that Shannon had been tied to the floor, they tied her arms and tied her to the, a wooden beam, it says, in the floor to keep her from going anywhere while Donovan went out. So Shannon, that poor little girl, was locked under this bed, tied to a floor beam for 24 days and apparently all this was in a bid to get £50,000 to help find her. So the idea was that they was going to put her into Dewsbury, take her to Dewsbury, and then Donovan was going to take hand her in to the police and say, I think this is the missing girl, get the 50,000 reward, so we thought. 
and share it with Karen. And that's the whole idea of where this will go in. Another little rumour was that Karen was seeing Donovan and after all this, she was going to leave Craig Meehan to be with Donovan. So I think she's quite a lost soul anyway and very vulnerable. So after the trial, Karen Matthews and Donovan both got given eight years. After four years, Karen Matthews got released and Donovan had already been released at this point. And Karen Matthews was also given a new name in public. I don't know if this means a whole new identity, but she was definitely given a new name. So luckily, this case was solved. Both people, although people think there were a lot more other, other people involved, both people got sentenced, even though there was also released way before they should have been released, in my opinion. However, Shannon Matthews is now 19 or 20, and I believe she does have a new identity. And she's living a life somewhere else. I hope this trauma and something like this hasn't scarred her for life because that poor little girl didn't deserve any of this. So that's it for today's true crime and story time. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, then please do subscribe and hit the bell. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.